Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 80 of the Blender Master Course Character Animation. In the previous 10 chapters, we learned to model the character's body, its hair particles, the clothes of the character and then we also learned about all the concepts related to character rigging in Blender. Then later on, we discussed about the face rigging tools and in this particular chapter, we'll understand about creating character animations since we'll be making an animation sequence where the character will be doing some pull-ups and then in the end, we'll also be rendering it in order to create a final animation. And and yes, if you are new to this course, then you can watch the previous 80 chapters from the link of the playlist given in the pinned comment. So we created this character and if you want to download the file containing this character, then you can join the Patreon of this channel from the link available in the description of this video. And now to begin with the animation, we'll first go to the solid mode and also let's hide the meta rig from the scene collection and we'll also be hiding the character's hair particles in the 3D viewport. So I'll select the character's body, then in the particle system, turn off the real-time display of this hair particle system. Now to create any kind of character animation, we first have to select the character's rig and go to the pose mode by pressing ctrl plus tab. Then suppose I want to create an animation showing the arm and the hand of character moving in the downward direction. Then for this, first I'll deselect everything. Then we have to select this particular control which is red in color and has the name handik.l. Now to save this position of this control at the frame number 1, we simply need to press the i key. So if I press i, you will notice that a keyframe has been inserted at the frame number 1. Now I'll take the pointer to somewhere near frame number 60, then go to the 3D viewport and to move it down, We'll first change the transform orientations to global, then in 3D viewport, press G, Z and move it down like this. And with this, we have moved the character's hand and the arm in the downward direction. Now to save this position for the frame number 60, simply press the I key to insert the keyframe. And now if I take my pointer to the frame number 1 and press the space bar, then you will notice that we have a simple animation created showing the downward movement of the hand. Now moving ahead, we'll be understanding about the character animation in complete detail by creating a simple animation sequence showing the character doing some pull-ups. So for this, let's first clear the transform for the selected control. So go to the pose menu, then in the clear transform select all. Also, go to the timeline editor, press A to select all the keyframes and press X to delete them and select delete keyframes. Now first of all, we'll return back to the object mode and we'll be adding a cylindrical rod in the scene which the character will be holding while doing the pull-ups. So for this, press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the cylinder. Now tab into the edit mode, press A to select everything and we'll rotate it in the Y axis by 90 degrees. Now let's scale it down like this and then we'll scale it up in the x-axis and once we have done the scaling of this rod we'll return back to the object mode and to place it properly let's go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad press g to move it and place it over here we'll be placing it somewhere near the tip of the character's head on the front side now to begin with creating the animation we'll select the character's rig then press ctrl plus tab to enter the pose mode and we'll also take the pointer back to the frame number one now the first thing that we'll be doing in order to create the animation of the character doing the pull-ups will be to animate the lower body of the character with the help of the foot controls and to ensure that whatever changes I'll make on the left side also get applied to the right we simply need to turn on the mirroring effect in the x-axis by clicking on this icon now press one on the numpad to go to the front view and with the foot control selected we'll move it up like this and yes our main objective is to create an animation where initially at the frame number one the character's body will be in the default position then at somewhere around frame number 40 the character's legs and the arm will move in the upward direction and the fingers of the character's hand will be holding this rod and then from the frame number 40, the character's body will move in the up and down position in order to show the pull-up animation by the character's body. But for now, returning back to the feet, we'll go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and we'll move them in the y-axis like this. Let's also rotate them properly and you can adjust the character's feet in any way depending upon the character's body and your personal preference. Now once we have finalized the position of the feet controls or basically the lower body of the character, we need to insert the keyframes in the timeline editor. So for this, I'll keep the pointer to the frame number 40 and now we need to select both of these controls together meaning the control for the left and also the one for the right foot so to do this with the left one selected hold down the shift button and we'll select the right foot control now press i to insert a keyframe at the frame number 40 however if i try to move my pointer in the timeline editor then you will see that the legs are not moving in the upward direction and this is because we need to insert a keyframe at the frame number one showing the default position of the character's lower body so i'll take the pointer to the frame number one and to get the default position with both of these controls selected, I'll go to the pose menu, then in the clear transform, select all. Now press I to insert a keyframe and with this, if I press the space bar to play the animation, then now you will see that the feet of the character will begin to move. Similarly, let's also animate the arms and the hands of character and for this, we have to select the hand controls which will be used for moving the character's hands and the arms. So first of all, we'll insert a keyframe at the frame number one for the default position of both the hand controls. So with the left one selected, I'll hold the shift button to select the right hand control and with 
both of them selected, press I to insert a keyframe. Now I'll take the pointer to the frame number 40 and now it's the time to move the character's hands in the upward direction. So let's go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad and with both the controls selected, I will press G to move the hands and the arms like this. And we have to keep it in such a way that the character's hands are located on the top of this rod. Now let's go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and let's also move the hands slightly forward in the Y axis like this. Now to insert a keyframe with both the controls selected for the hands, press the I key and now you will notice that as I change the frames in the timeline editor, we have a simple animation created showing the upward movement of both the legs and the feet and also the character's arms and the hands. Now moving ahead, we'll also create the animation showing the rotation of the character's hands and for this, let's first hide all the other controls in the scene apart from these two hand controls. So for this, we simply need to press Ctrl plus I to invert the selection and this will deselect both the hand controls from the rig and the remaining controls will get selected. Now press H to hide them and in this way, we'll be having only the hand controls in the scene. Now with both of them selected, I'll take the pointer to somewhere near frame number 35 and we'll insert a keyframe at this position. Now I'll take the pointer to the frame number 45 and to rotate the hands, press R and Z and rotate it in the Z axis like this. After this, press the I key to insert a keyframe at the frame number 45. So in this way, we have created a simple animation in which first the character's legs and the arms will move up and then the character's hands will show the rotation. Also, if you want, you can select this keyframe at the frame number 40 and press X to delete it. Moving ahead, we'll also be showing the fingers of the character's hand holding this rod. And for this, we first need to unhide all the remaining controls. So press Alt plus H and now we need to select only those particular controls that are available for the character's fingers. So we'll select all these controls over here by holding the shift button. Let's also select it for the left hand and after this, press Ctrl plus I to invert the selection and press H to hide. With this, you are only having the finger controls in the scene. Now press A to select everything and at the frame number 45, press I to insert a keyframe. Then I'll take the pointer to somewhere near the frame number 55 and to create the holding animation by using the finger controls, we first need to ensure that in the transform pivot point, individual origins is selected. After this, with all the controls selected, press S to scale down and yes, in some cases, it might be possible that a particular finger would still not show the bending because of incorrect calculation of the bone roll. So to solve this problem, let's first unhide all the remaining controls by pressing Alt plus H then deselect everything and you can see here that this little finger is not bending properly and as a result, I'll select this control for this little finger which is in the middle and press R to rotate the finger in the X axis. Also, to insert the keyframes for the fingers, we have to select all the controls where we made the changes. So with this one selected for the little finger, we'll be selecting all the other controls for the remaining fingers that we previously selected. So let's select all of these on the left side also and now press I to insert the keyframe at the frame number 55. Also, if I take the pointer to the frame number 45, then we can see here that all the fingers are showing the default position apart from this little finger. And this is because we have not created a separate keyframe at the frame number 45 for the specific control that we use for the rotation. So for this, with the X-ray mode turned on, I'll first deselect everything and then we have to select that particular control which we used for the finger's rotation. With this selected, I'll go to the pose menu and clear the transform by selecting all then press the I key to insert the keyframe and so with this if I begin to move the pointer forward in the timeline editor then you will see that we have created a beautiful animation of the bending fingers. Now moving ahead the next thing that we are going to do is to move the character's body up in the Z axis. So for this let's go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad and I'll keep the pointer to somewhere near frame number 50. Now to move the character's body in the upward direction we'll be selecting this torso control. Now press I to insert a keyframe at the default position and we'll take the pointer to somewhere near frame number 9. Now move the control up in the Z axis like this and left click to finalize. Now press I to insert a keyframe and it might be possible that due to excessive increase in height, the character's legs will get stretched up. So to solve this problem, we'll be selecting both of these controls for the character's feet. Then I'll take the pointer back to the frame number 40 and we'll move them up in the Z axis. Now left click to finalize and press I to insert the keyframe again. Now to view the animation, I'll take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and press the space bar. And so with this, we have created an animation showing the movement of different body parts of the character. Also, I will be rotating these feet, so press R to rotate them like this and left click to finalize. Now moving ahead, the next thing that we are going to do is to convert this one-time animation into a loop animation. And to do this, we'll first select 
this torso control and with both of these keyframes selected, we'll create the duplicates by pressing Shift and D and we'll move them in such a way that the first keyframe of the duplicates is exactly 40 frames away from the last animation keyframe. So basically for the duplicate, the first keyframe should be at the frame number 130 and the last should be at the frame number 170. And in this way, you will notice that the character's body will continue to show the animation in a complete loop. If you want the animation to further continue, then for this, we can again create a duplicate by pressing Shift plus D and we'll move them at some way near the frame number 210 and the frame number 250 respectively. Now moving ahead, we'll be making some final adjustments before finally rendering this animation. So for this, I'll go to the frame number 1 and we'll see the entire animation again from the different angles. So I'll press the space bar. And now one thing that I can notice here is that the distance between the character's body and the rod is too much around those regions where the character's body goes down and again goes up. So to solve this problem, I'll take my pointer to somewhere near the frame number 70 that is around the midpoint of the first pair of keyframes. Then with the torso selected, we'll also be selecting both the controls for the feet and we'll move them slightly in the Y axis. Now left click to finalize and press I to insert the keyframe. Similarly, we also need to use the same keyframe in between all the other pairs of keyframes that we have created for the loop animation. So for this, I will left click to select this keyframe, then press shift plus D to create a duplicate and will place it somewhere near the frame number 110. Similarly, to repeat the same process again, for the remaining pairs, I will use the shortcut which is to press shift plus R and this will automatically create a duplicate of the keyframe and place it at the same distance away according to the distance of the previous one. And now to view the final animation, I will take the pointer back to the frame number 1 and press the space bar. And finally, we have created this animation where first of all, the character's body will move up then after holding the rod the character will be doing the pull-ups now moving ahead we'll also be creating a simple animation showing the change of expressions of the character's face so for this we'll be selecting this particular control which is named as bone.mouth and with this I'll first move it down in the z-axis in order to create a slightly sad face then press I to insert the keyframe at the frame number 1 then I'll take the pointer to somewhere near the frame number 40 and press I to insert another keyframe with the same expression then I'll take the pointer to somewhere near the frame number 70 or frame number 60 and we'll move the control up in the z-axis to show the smiling face now press I to insert a keyframe at this frame number and in this way we'll be able to create an animation showing the change of of expressions on the character's face. Now after doing all this, we can finally render the animation and for this, let's go to the rendered view. Let's also turn on the real-time display of the hair particles. So for this, let's first come back to the object mode by pressing Ctrl and Tab, then select the character's body and in the particle settings, turn on the real-time display. Also, do ensure that you have turned on the cycles render engine and right now, for a better performance, I have reduced the maximum samples in the viewport from 1024 to a value of 32. Also to ensure that you have a proper lighting in the scene, you have to open Open this menu and in the lighting, turn on the scene lights and turn off the scene world. Moving ahead, I'll select this rod, right click and apply shade auto smooth and to give it some material, let's go to the material properties, create new material. Now to make the rod look like a metal, I'll increase the metallic value to something like 0.8. Let's also change the base color from here and you can choose any color of your choice but for now, I will be using the dark green color. Also, let's add a plane at the bottom. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and add a plane, press tab to go to the edit mode and we'll scale it up 10 times. Now now let's come out of the edit mode and let's also create a simple background for our scene. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and add another plane. Let's rotate it in the X axis by 90 degrees. Also to adjust its position, I'll first go to the solid mode. Now go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad, press G to move the plane and place it over here. Let's scale it up. So go to the edit mode, press S to scale it up 10 times. Now come out of the edit mode and to create the material, we'll open the material preview mode. Now with the plane selected, we'll be creating a new material. So go to the material properties, click on the new button and in this particular case, we'll be giving some texture to the plane's material. So for this, let's open the shader editor. So click on this icon and from here, select the shader editor. Now we'll be adding the magic texture in the shader editor. So press shift plus A, go to texture and select the magic texture. Let's place it over here, connect the color socket to the base color and now you will begin to notice a simple and a random texture applied to the background. To change its appearance, we'll first increase the depth to a value of 3 or 4. Then we'll increase the scale value from here and I'll keep it to somewhere around 14. Let's also 
also increase the distortion from here and I'll be keeping it to a value of somewhere close to 3. To add some colors to it, we'll be using the color ramp node. So press shift plus A, go to converter and select the color ramp and we'll place it in between the magic texture and the principal BSDF. Now for the first color, I will be selecting the red color. So let's increase the brightness from here and change this to the red color. Then for the second pointer, let's move it over here and I'll change this to light blue color. Also, by changing the position of these pointers, you can change the way how the texture looks on the plain background. Moving ahead, if you want to give a 3D appearance to the background that we created, then you can use the bump node in the shader editor. So press shift plus A, go to vector and select the bump. We'll place it over here. Now take the color socket in the magic texture and connect it to the height in the bump node. Then for the output, I'll take the normal socket of the bump node and connect it to the normal in the principal BSDF. To see how it looks, in the final version, we'll switch to the rendered view and finally this is how the texture is looking. If you want, you can set the same texture for this plane also by clicking on this icon and from here, select that specific material. However, in this case, I'll be creating a simple material with a dark base color for the plane to be used as the base. So I've set the color to dark green. I'll also increase the roughness value to somewhere around 0.8 or 0.9 and now it looks perfect. So to render it, let's first go to the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad and to adjust it properly, we'll go to the solid mode and to move the camera, we'll click on this lock button which is the lock camera to view. Now let's change the angle and the positioning of the camera in order to get a perfect view. Also if you want, you can change the resolution of your camera by going to the output properties and by default this resolution is entered which is 1920 pixels in the X and 1080 pixels in the Y which also gives the camera the landscape resolution. However, if you want to change this to the vertical or the portrait resolution then you can go to the resolution values and we simply need to interchange these values. So in the X we'll enter 1080 and in the Y we'll be entering 1920. Now to adjust the camera properly, let's first disable the lock camera to view. Now zoom out and we'll again enable the lock camera to view. Now I'll zoom out. Now let's adjust the camera properly in order to get a perfect rendered video. And once all this is done, we'll be finally ready to render the animation. So for this, we first need to change the file format from PNG to this FFMPEG video format. And in this output path, you basically need to enter that specific location where the video will be saved. So you can click on this folder icon and choose that specific location. And after all this is done, we'll go to the render properties and you can set the maximum samples to any value that you like. However, higher the value of maximum samples, better will be the quality. But with that, it will also take much more time to render. In fact, in most of the cases, it is suggested to have a value of a maximum of 128 samples for general usage. So in this particular case also, I'll be changing this maximum sample value in the render category to 128. And after this, we are now ready to render the final animation. So click on this render option and from here, select the render animation. After this, the rendering will start. However, we can see in the final render that the lighting is not perfect. So to solve this problem, we'll cancel the render by clicking on the escape button and I'll now close this render window. Now we are back in the scene and to adjust the lights properly, I'll first turn off the lock camera to view and let's switch to the rendered view. Now to see that version, which we'll also be seeing when we finally render the animation, we'll click on this icon and from here, turn on the scene world. Now to add some lighting, let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad and I'll select this light, which is by default added in the scene. Now press G to move it and place it over here. To change its properties, let's go to the object data properties and if you want, you can try to increase the power from here and in fact change the color of light by using this color wheel. But for now, I will select the default values and after this, in the 3D viewport with this lamp selected, we'll create its duplicate by pressing shift plus D and we'll place it in the X axis like this. Now I'll select both of these lights together, press shift plus D to create more duplicates and we'll move them in the Y axis. To see how it looks, let's go to the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad and now the lighting almost looks perfect. However, we still need to adjust it around the region in between the rod and the face of character. Also, the reason why we are seeing a slower performance is that we have turned on the cycles render engine. So for now, I'll switch this to the EV. Now I'll select this lamp, go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad, let's zoom out and with this lamp selected, press shift plus D to create a duplicate and we'll place it over here close to the character's face. To adjust it properly, let's go to the side view by pressing 3 on the numpad and let's move it slightly forward in the y-axis. Also to reduce its influence or the power, we'll go to the object data properties and we reduce the power to somewhere around 50 watts. And with this, we are now having a much better lighting in the scene. And now we are also ready to render the final animation. So go to the render properties and change the render engine from EV to cycles, then click on render and select render animation. After this, Blender will take some time to render the entire animation frame by frame. And once this is done, you can view the final animation by opening that particular folder which you saved in the output path. And this is the final rendered video that I created after making a few adjustments.
And so with this, we now arrive to the end of this chapter. Today we understood about the concepts of character animation by creating this simple scene of the character's body moving up and down doing the pull-ups. In fact, in a similar way, you can also create your own animations with your 3D character just by inserting the keyframes for the particular rig control. Moreover, with this, we have almost arrived to the end of this course. Till now, we have completed a total of 81 chapters starting from the chapter number 0 to this current chapter. And to give it an end, I'll be uploading one more chapter in this series, which will be the chapter number 81 the end conclusion so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one